Kelsey. This is my channel, The Fancy Hat Lady Reads. I am wearing one of my fancy booktube hats, and today I am bringing you my book haul for the month of March. In March, I bought a good deal of books, but they were all used books, so there are no new books in this haul. The vast majority of these are books that I got for a dollar, and the majority of those are mass market paperbacks. I have nine mass market paperbacks here, one trade paperback, and then two used hardcovers that I got at thrift stores for three bucks each, I think. So I'm gonna start right off with the mass market paperbacks and show you the one that I'm actually most excited to have found. This is a copy of The Charwoman's Shadow by Lord Dunsany, which is another novel by Lord Dunsany. Um, his more famous novel is The King of Elfland's Daughter, which I really liked. And I think this old cover is absolutely lovely. I'm not usually a huge fan of like old vintage SFF covers but I do rather like this one. Lord Dunsany was writing like in the 1920s, so pre-Tolkien, and I think this was published in 1926. His writing is like really lush and beautiful, and he's a classic fantasy author that I really want to read more from. The next is this copy of The Hollow Hills by Mary Stewart. This is the second in her Arthurian series, the first of which is The Crystal Cave, which I'm looking at my copy right here, um, which I haven't read yet. And this may come as sort of a surprise to some of you who know me because you may know that I'm not all that fond of Arthurian legend and I absolutely detested The Once and Future King, which was the last Arthurian book I read. But I do intend to read The Crystal Cave and I would also like to read The Hollow Hills. And that is because both of these books won the Mythopoeic Fantasy Award. And I have been sort of toying with the idea of doing a reading project for reading all of the Mythopoeic Fantasy Award winners, at least all the adult winners. Like a number of booktubers have done for other awards or other sorts of reading lists. And for me, if I were to do a reading project like that, it would be the Mythopoeic Fantasy Award winners. That's the set of books that I feel I would like to read. So while I don't have time to really plan that project yet, I am sort of casually stockpiling books in anticipation of it. The next book I have here is this mass market paperback copy of Traitor by Charles de Lint, which is one of his Newford novels. I have a number of these. I'm currently reading The Onion Girl, which is one of these Newford books. They are sort of mythic urban fantasy that take place in a fictional city called Newford, and they are all basically standalones with some overlapping characters. I'm sure I will end up liking some of them better than others. Some of them have better reviews on Goodreads than others. This is one of the ones that has some pretty good reviews. Um, so I picked this one up as well. The next book I have here, I realize I think every single book in this haul is a fantasy book. That wasn't intentional, I just now realized that. Anyways, the next one is Damiano by R.A. McAvoy. This is the same author who wrote Tea with the Black Dragon, which I really enjoyed. That was sort of a more urban fantasy mystery, and this is something very different from her. This is the first in, I think it's a trilogy, it's definitely a series, that is historical fantasy that takes place in, I think, an alternate Renaissance Italy. This is from the 1980s, I think, and it's an older fantasy series that I am curious about. The next book I have is not one that I was necessarily otherwise planning on reading, but this is actually a 48 cent copy, so here it is. This is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. I've not had the greatest track record with uh, enjoying Gaiman before, I am, however, really enjoying Stardust, which I'm in the middle of right now for the Unicorn Readathon, so that gives me hope. I think this is a sort of creepy London portal fantasy. Um, part of why I picked this up is someone, I forget who, mentioned in my comments that the Francis Harding novel A Face Like Glass, which I absolutely adored, reminded them a little of Neverwhere, and so they thought that maybe I might also like Neverwhere. So I am intrigued. After Stardust, this would be the other Neil Gaiman novel that I'm interested, genuinely interested in giving a read to. Next, I have another more direct follow-up to a book that I just read for the Unicorn Readathon, and this is Empire of Ivory, book four in the Temeraire series by Naomi Novik. This is 
alternate Napoleonic Wars with Dragons. I just read the second book, Throne of Jade. I do have the third, which is Black Powder War. So I am continuing to build my collection of this series. And the next three of these all go together because these are the first three books in a series I got all of them together for a dollar each. These are the first books in the Night Runner series by Lynn Flewelling. She's an author that a number of fantasy readers on booktube really enjoy. The first three books in this series at least seem to be well-loved. Um, some people on Goodreads seem to think that the series drops off a bit after that, but uh, we'll see with these three. She has another series set in this world, um, the first book of which is The Bone Dolls Twin, and that series looks like it might be more interesting to me than this one, but I don't know if you have to read these in order to read that other series. Anyhow, these are book one, Luck in the Shadows, book two, Stalking Darkness, and book three, Traitor's Moon. I think these are supposed to be basically exciting traditional high fantasy with a focus on a central male-male romance. So that is the end of the mass market paperbacks. I have one trade paperback that I got for a dollar, and this is Illusion by Paula Volsky. This is a book that I wasn't consciously aware that I was aware of until I saw the cover looking at me and I was like, I, I know this book, I recognize this book. That is marketing at work for you. But this is one that Goodreads does recommend to me in the recommendations quite a lot, and I hadn't really seen in the little thumbnail on Goodreads how pretty the cover actually is. It is really lovely. It's like she's standing there with these gates that are these worked metal so they look like she has wings. Anyhow, this is a fantasy standalone by a female author so I am interested. I tend to prefer standalones to series when it comes to this sort of traditional fantasy and this does look sort of formulaic. It looks like, you know, rebellion is brewing in the underclasses to overthrow a tyrannical regime, but the writing in this is supposed to be very, very beautiful. I think this was published in 1992. And then the last two are my recent hardcovers that I got for three dollars each. The first of these is Last Song Before Night by Ilana C. Meyer. Um, this book recently came to my attention. I, I had been aware of it before, but I hadn't really paid much attention to it because this author is just now coming out with a second book in this world, and I have been seeing some buzz for that book that has been catching my interest. This is another essentially traditional fantasy standalone by a female author. What I'm particularly interested in is I think this focuses heavily on music as part of this fantasy world, and I am really interested in fantasy where the arts play a large role. And this has been out for a couple years or so now. When was this published? This was published in 2015. And then my last book here is probably the one I'll be reading soonest, and this is A Skinful of Shadows by Frances Harding. This is Harding's most recent standalone historical fantasy YA novel. And the reason I'll probably be reading this relatively soon is that this is nominated for the new not a Hugo award for young adult novels, and I am hoping to read several of the books on that short list in the near future, this being one of them. I love how this was obviously a reviewer's copy that they donated to the thrift store because it's got a sell sheet in it. Anyhow, fun times. That is the end of my book haul. Let me see if I can... Uh, hold on just a sec. There they are! There's the books, all used, all fantasy, ranging from the 1920s to last year in terms of publication dates, so there's a wide range of, basically just a wide range of fantasy. Anyhow, let me know if you've read any of these, or if you're planning to, let me know what you think. Anyhow, I hope you're having a nice day. That is all. Bye for now.